I decided over time that I want my YouTube channel to be a reflection of myself and my interests, which includes math, science, and other topics like Marvel, which is why today I will be starting Science Time on my channel Watso Videos. Since today is Pi Day, I was thinking about different ways to calculate Pi over the course of this school day. Now the first way I was thinking of it was using the general formula for circumference. Circumference equals 2 pi times the radius. Now an easy way to do this at home would be to take a long object like headphones and measure the length of them because that would be the circumference of the circle you're about to create. Then, if you took your headphones and put it into a circle and measured the diameter and then did diameter divided by 2, you would get the radius. So you'd have everything in the circumference formula except the pi, the pi and, and of course you'd have the 2. So then, if you could plug it in, c equals 2 pi r and solve for pi, c divided by r and 2, you would get a rough estimation of pi. So that's an easy way to prove it at home at your leisure. But there's a more difficult way or more rigorous way using calculus. To find this using calculus, you first have to understand what pi represents in when it comes up in math. So if you have a circle, like we found when the circumference equals 2 pi r, that means if the radius was 1, the radius is pretty much just being a scalar. So it really doesn't matter in this case, because it would just be 1 and it wouldn't matter. So 2 pi would equal the circumference, meaning half of the circumference would be only the upper half of the circle. So the upper half of the circle should equal pi, one half the circumference. So that's the idea that we're trying to get at when we find the length of the upper part. That's, that will be the goal, is to find the upper length of the circle. So what we're going to need to do is take the idea of a circle and use arc length. So imagine that this is a circle on a graph and the general form for equation for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. But in this case, we're just going to use one because that will simplify things. So we'll just do one squared, which is just one. Now we're going to use a fancy formula to, in, that you learn in Calculus 2, the arc length formula. So what we're really finding is we're going from this point to this point and finding the length of this area. Now the bottom is not going to be used, and that will be explained when we solve for x or solve for y, because we need it in terms of y to use the formula, which I will show. So first we need to solve for y. So first we'll subtract over the, the 1 and subtract over the, the y squared. And then we'll multiply each side by negative 1. And then we'll square root each side. So when we're all done, we should have square root of negative x squared plus 1 equals y. So since we square rooted, that means that there has to be a plus or minus. And so the bottom part of the circle, when you graph this equation, when using plus, will only be the top part, since we have to satisfy the vertical line test to make it a function. 
So the negative part of the circle will only be there if we graph another equation that's the negative of this. So the equation that we're going to use, I will write down now, is the integral. So we're adding up the square root of the derivative of the function squared plus 1 with respect to x. So what does this mean for non-calculus people? That pretty much means, since we have this circle on the graph, if you can kind of see Pyth Pythagorean's theorem in this. So what it really is, is you're finding the length of little triangles. Little triangle here, little triangle here, little triangle here and so on and so forth around it. And then when you do these lines, it'll be dash, 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 dash. And so we're summing up these little lines that we're finding through these Pythagoras, and we're doing that until each line is infinitely small, so we're just getting the length of this upper part of the circle. So now we can do the formula. So first we need to do the derivative of the original function. So the original function was equal to the square root of negative x squared plus 1. So first we need, I usually like doing this to change the power since that equals the square root. It's easier to do the derivative this way. So, so then we bring down the f power, lower the po power, and then do the derivative of the inside, the chain rule. So we have to multiply by negative 2x. And so the 2's cross out, and then we're left with negative x divided by the square root of negative x squared plus 1, which we need for our arc length formula, the derivative squared. So now we need to integrate and since we're using a unit circle this is just negative 1 to 1 because this is this is the radius from the center and, and here's the radius from the center. So negative 1 to 1 is our bounds. And then we do the square root of the derivative of the circle plus 1 with respect to x. Now you plug this in your calculator and you get 3.14159. That's what I got on my TI-89. So this is the calculus way of determining pi. Obviously the first way using headphones or some kind of other loop is easier but it's just a really interesting way to figure out how pi can come up. Normally I make Star Wars Secrets of the Forest videos so if you'd like to see those I have lots of videos on my channel. Thank you for watching today and have a happy pi day. <laughs>